past few years. Tom Burke has joined me in the studio. He's the chairman of the environmental think tank E3G. Uh, Tom Burke, what was it, first of all, that went wrong in Copenhagen? Because for many people, it was a disaster. Yes, it was. Uh, I think two things went wrong. First of all, it was a, too early in the uh, politics of climate change. Events hadn't got to the pitch they've got now, where the political risks to leaders of not doing something about climate change are now being e exceeded by the political risks of doing something. The second thing I think has changed is that before Copenhagen, the, a low carbon economy was a PowerPoint presentation, essentially. Now it's a massive programme that's absorbing most of the investment in new energy uh, around the world uh, and is a serious option for investors to consider. Consider. Let's explore that idea about the politics of climate change having shifted. How, how would you characterise the nature of that shift? Has it come from uh, the top down or the other way? Has it come from the grassroots activism? Oh, I think you're right. It's come really from the bottom up. Not so much the activism. There was a lot of activism before Copenhagen as well. But analytically, what was driving uh, events before Copenhagen was essentially the knowledge, the science. I think what's driving it now is experience, is the fact that things are happening to people, as some of those people on the package said, they're witnessing the changing climate in front of them. And that's really what's now beginning to uh, move the politics of climate change forward. We still hear, though, don't we, that the, the countries that need to be persuaded are not necessarily persuaded yet. I'm talking about China, about India and the United States. I'm not sure that that's true anymore. I think that was certainly the picture before Copenhagen. But actually, one of the reasons why there is more optimism now is because China and America have come together in quite a strong way. Uh, and they're really why it's hard to see anybody really wrecking uh, this uh, uh, series of meetings. But the the people, there are still people. India is still very difficult. India worries a lot about getting electricity to its poor and it, it it's very focused on using a lot of coal in order to do that. I think there are countries still like Saudi Arabia that have reservations. But some of the countries, Venezuela, uh, Cuba, Br uh, Bolivia, that were very difficult before, have really come much more to join the, the sort of global consensus. And and how how optimistic then are you? You say that the, it's there's a lot less of a chance of any wrecking it outright. It's partly also to do with the fact that people have had to go to Paris with their ideas first, which is what didn't happen in Copenhagen. Uh, that's exactly right. I think the French have been very much uh, cleverer than were the people who organised Copenhagen in the sense that not only have they had people put what their offer is on the table first, but also they've had the leaders come in at the beginning, not the end. And so the leaders are going to come to Paris, they're going to uh, make a speech, declare victory and go home. That makes it very difficult for them to allow it to break down at the end and undo all those good headlines. Tom Burke, uh, chairman of the environmental think tank E3G, thank you for coming into the News Hour studio. There will be lots more on this story in the next few days on the BBC World Service, and you can follow lots of it on our website, bbc.com forward slash news.